Hello, I'm Reverend Tony, and thanks again for joining me today on our sermon, which I'd like to discuss. It's a very important topic. It's called loneliness, something that we all go through, have gone through, and will go through at some point in our life. Loneliness is that dark, empty abyss we all go into at some time in our lives. Sometimes we go there on more than one occasion. When life's trials and tribulations become overwhelming, that feeling begins to creep in upon us until we are totally surrounded by this. It is like a cancer. It just grows. We feel alone, useless, unable to see a way out, no one there to help us. The weight of the world is upon us weighed down by our troubles. Loneliness, I will tell you, is not prejudice. It goes after all of us. Some of the greatest and most holy people have been lonely. Because we feel lonely does not mean we are alone. God is there with us, whether you believe it or not. He is there alongside of us. He is our companion. God has told us time after time, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Loneliness is one of Lucifer's tools that he uses against us. Why? Because it works. Many of us can attest to that, especially me. It is his way to distract us, to get us off the path of righteousness, our eyes off God. Remember, in that darkness, there is always that special light, the light of God. This is the light that will show us the way out. All we have to do is look for it. Loneliness is and can be the result of many factors, some being depression, lack or a loss of a friendship, loss of a pet or a loved one, a breakup or even a divorce. It is in these times that we need to call out to God repeatedly, reminding ourselves to keep the faith, to build our faith stronger. Keep calling until you hear a soft, gentle voice comforting you, telling you it will be okay, that with Him all things are possible, that He will show you, show us, the way out. The darkness never lasts, the light always does. The sadness and pain of loneliness does not last. Joy, peace, and comfort do. The apostles even felt the feeling of loneliness, especially Peter when he denied Christ three times before the cock crowed. As they went into the world too, preach what they heard from Jesus. They knew that no matter how hard things would become, that Jesus would be there with them. Not only would Jesus be with them, but the Father as well, along with the Holy Spirit. What a feeling to know that. I've said it before in other sermons, and I'll say it now, as well as future sermons. The closer we draw to Jesus, the closer we draw to God the more Satan will up the attack. The evil one does not want us to receive God's blessing. So he will do whatever it takes to draw us away. Loneliness is one of his most powerful weapons. He knows exactly when and where to strike with it. Don't forget he was the first creation of all angels, the very first of angels the one that was called perfection before he was cast down from heaven from his younger brother Michael on God's orders. We must be ahead of the game, aware of this, but not paranoid. God does not want us to be paranoid. He wants us to love life, be kind and loving to each other. By doing this, we drive away the loneliness. Will this drive it away permanently? No, not likely. However, we have two of our weapons. Our two greatest weapons are God and Jesus. 
along with each other. Jesus too felt loneliness, especially the night that Judas turned him in and betrayed him. He endured, he overcame. Will we find our strength in him? He wants our troubles and burdens. He encourages us to tell him and cast upon him our feelings. He will handle them for us and guide us, showing the correct way to overcome. There are also other outlets to seek out to help you overcome. Call a friend, seek support groups, call your reverend, minister, your priest, your rabbi, or even a relative. Each one of us since Adam and Eve has felt and experienced loneliness. God created us to be connected, to be there for each other. Our gift from God is life. Our gift to God is what we do with that life. If Jesus can experience an, o an overwhelming of loneliness and endure, with his strength in us, so can we. Keep praying. Keep seeking. Keep asking. All of our answers are there. We may feel loneliness, experience it, but the truth is that we are never alone. For each experience we endure, God refines us, makes us stronger, more knowledgeable on how to overcome it quicker the next time. How to see it coming before it surprises us. We are God's children. It is our birthright to live a life full of abundance in all areas. We are not to live in darkness, loneliness, or even sadness, although it will enter our lives. That's just the way it is. Jesus died, so we will live. He is our joy, our strength, our only salvation. Let us honor him by overcoming all Satan throws at us, especially loneliness. As the sermon today comes to an end, let us pray, asking God to continue blessing us and thanking Him for all He has done, is doing, and will do for each of us. Let us do this in the name of His Holy Son, Christ Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. My dear friends, children, supporters in Christ, please, if you're feeling lonely, call someone. No matter who it is, if you feel suicidal, please remember, suicide is not the answer. There is help out there. You can call either Tony Ramaco Ministries, the National Suicide Helpline, as I mentioned in the sermon, your priest, your rabbi, any clergy, a relative, or a close friend. Even talk to God or Jesus. Life is abundant. Life is beautiful. Don't worry about what you see, what's going on in this world. The world is only beginning. Don't believe that we're in the end of times. We're not. The things we see in the chaos and the evil about you is just a message being sent to turn our ways away from evil, to turn back to God. It's just a message. Please heed that message. Turn to God. Turn to Jesus. Turn to each other. Is it going to be hard? Yes. We can all attest to that. But Jesus wants us to do what he did. He wants us to keep trying. And like he never gave up on us, we should never give up on him, his Father, the Holy Spirit, which his Father gave us, which Jesus said he would, send someone else when he went away, and each other. Until next time, I'm Reverend Tony, and please, continue to walk in the presence of God. You'll be glad you did. Have a blessed week.